The KDKA Sports Report is brought to you by Allegheny Health Network. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bob Pompiani. This was not a Steelers Sunday, but I did spend most of it talking Steelers down at the Heinz History Center, where they hosted author Michael McCambridge for a book signing about his new biography called Chuck Knoll, His Life's Work. I was honored to be the MC in a fireside chat conversation yeah, setting about Chuck Knoll with Michael McCambridge, Joe Green, Rocky Blyer, and Tun Chilkin. This is a terrific look inside the private life of a private man, somehow doing it in a very public life as a four-time Super Bowl winning coach of the Steelers. Great stories, extensive research over four Four years in the making, McCambridge captures the essence of the man for all seasons, Chuck Knoll. He interviewed over 300 people for this book, but it was interesting. He was turned down just by one person, and that was Terry Bradshaw. He refused to be interviewed despite the urging of Dan Rooney and Joe Green. So I asked the author how challenging was this project. It was a challenge because Chuck was a challenging subject, but it was also fascinating. I, I was never bored in the, over those three and a half years. It's safe to say you'll never meet a more unique person than Chuck Noll. He is one of a kind, and one of the great uh, joys that I had in this book was getting to have dinner occasionally with Chuck and Mary Ann and seeing the interplay between those two, because as you said, it, it, was, it was a love story, and seeing what Chuck meant to Mary Ann and what he meant to his his family was one of the paths to understanding who he was and what he was about. No quotes from Terry Bradshaw. Why was that? Terry uh, declined to be interviewed. I think Terry still has some resentment, it's safe to say, over his relationship with Chuck. As Joe Green said up there today, it was a it was a one-way problem. Chuck had no problem with Terry. Chuck, uh, in fact, Chuck gave the introduction to Terry at a Dapper Dan dinner back in the early 2000s, as you know. I think Terry just still has some issues and still harbors some, some resentment there. So he was the one person who didn't talk to me for the book, and I, I had to piece things together from what he had said in his own books and, and uh, what his teammates remembered. Yeah, without Chuck, Terry probably wouldn't have had the kind of success he had. Um, Art Rooney Jr., the head of scouting for so many years for the Steelers, said that to Terry himself. He said, you could have gone to New Orleans and it would have been just like what happened to Archie Manning, good player on a bad team. I think that Dan Rooney said this, Joe Green said this, Tom Moore, the offensive coordinator with the Steelers, said this. Chuck was exactly the sort of head coach that Terry Bradshaw needed to be the best quarterback he could be. It's a very good book, and while the Steelers relaxed on their bye week, Cincinnati, one of the teams right behind them, traveled across the pond. They didn't win. They didn't lose either as they took on the Redskins. In this I get a message from, from Franco every to 23rd of December. Hello? Hey, Phil. Hey, where were you 39 years ago? Is this Franco? You know what I was doing 39 years ago today, Franco? I was making you famous. Don't think he's almighty, Mr. Nice Guy. There's a side of him, too, that loves the Buster Raiders' butts. I can always rely on you to ruin my Christmases. It's been 40 years, and with each passing anniversary, the Immaculate Reception only seems to grow bigger. But is the truth out there, and will it ever be found? The man who made the play's name famous certainly thought so. Everybody has the film of uh, the deflection. Myron Cope had seen a film that proved exactly that that ball was above the ground. The ref says it's Opal Dopal, it's kosher. The network tapes, they were never conclusive. But our own television station had a cameraman at the game and I looked at his film, and a film that has remained practically a secret to this day. I watched that over and over again and it was a legal catch. You might say, well, let me see that film. I didn't pay attention to keeping films and you know television stations, they're apt to throw out some film that's worth a jillion dollars. That shot, like a, a lot of other great shots, ended up where they kept everything that we couldn't use on a day-to-day -day basis. In those days, a great play went from one show to the next, 11 o'clock news, next day's six, the next day's 11. It would be a needle in a haystack. What about the coach's film? Two days after the game, John Madden claimed the All-22 proved Bradshaw's pass struck Fuqua and not Tatum. It too has vanished. 
My position was on the top of the stadium at the 50-yard line. I followed the ball, but at the same time wide enough to see the players around it. Chuck Noll and the coaching staff asked to see the original copy, and I gave it to them, and whatever they did with the film, I really don't know. The network broadcast of the play was also believed lost. Then, right before the 1997 AFC Championship game, the tape mysteriously resurfaced. The version of this play you've undoubtedly seen is from NFL Films, but recently we unearthed the NBC version of that play. Here it is, as called by Kirk Gowdy. Last chance for the Steelers. And his pass is broken up by Tatum. Tipped up. It's absolutely the smoking gun. If you ever want, need to prove it in court, roll that tape out. He shoots it out. Jack Tatum deflects it right into the hands of Harris. What else are they going to say? <laughs> I mean, come on. What else are they going to say? That's coming from Pittsburgh. It's propaganda. Look at that footage that NBC had, and what you will see is infractions. There's some footage to show Villapiano getting clipped. There's some footage to show that the tip of the ball touched the ground. There's some footage to show that Jack Tatum knocked Frenchy Fuqua into the ball. That's what the fact of the matter is. When you talk about Christmas miracles, here's the miracle of all miracles. If the discovery of NBC's cameras could not solve the riddle of the Immaculate Reception, what could? In the late 1990s, Carnegie Mellon professor John Fetkovich became convinced the answer was science. Ballistically, all we need are Newton's laws of motion and Newton's law of gravity to decide the question whether it was a legal play or not. When I finished the analysis, I was astounded. For you, Senate Majority Pack is responsible for the content of this advertising. Right now on KDKA Battleground, Pennsylvania, one final push to secure votes in southwestern PA. We'll have Donald Trump's message for local voters and wait till you see the crowds that waited hours to see him. Plus, a shocking about face from the head of the FBI. What James Comey saying now about Hillary Clinton's email scandal. And lots of flags flying. A look at what went wrong in the Steelers' penalty play game against the Ravens. Live from the KDKA Broadcast Center in downtown Pittsburgh, this is KDKA TV News at 11. In two days, we are going to win the great state of Pennsylvania, and we are going to win back the White House. Well, Donald Trump was nearly two and a half hours late, but supporters braved long lines and cramped quarters to get a glimpse of the Republican nominee just two days before the election. Good evening, I'm Paul Martino. Thanks for staying up late with us tonight. Huge crowds there tonight. Thousands packing Atlantic Aviation and Moon Township. Many more turned away. We'll hear about Trump's speech from our John Delano. But first, Lynn Hayes Freeland and more on those crowds. Thousands of people waited hours here in Moon Township for an opportunity to hear Donald Trump just days before the election. But while many did get inside, there are another couple thousand people who were turned away at the gate. Trump 16! The first challenge supporters of Donald Trump had to overcome was traffic. At times at a standstill miles away from the rally's Moon Township location. We sat out in the parkway for an hour and a half. We've been two hours to come around this Baker Square here. We ran into quite a lot of traffic trying to get off the uh, interstate. Then there was the wait after they arrived. Hours literally with hopes of getting in. Well, I heard it's about two miles long. That doesn't stop someone who is determined. Donald Trump! 
I want to see if I see him from the curb. That's that's good enough for me. A small contingent of Hillary Clinton supporters were here too, not to be deterred by the large number of Trump supporters. No. We assume that there. I mean, we know there's a lot of Hillary supporters. The hangar, which was expected to hold around 15,000 people, didn't fill up until well after the 8 p.m. start time. But by 9 o'clock, the doors were closed, and even those with tickets were turned away. It was a long wait. <laughs> So you didn't, right make it in didn't make it. They say the gates yeah, are closed. Right. We were 20 yards away. And we were so excited, and unfortunately, they wouldn't let us in. So we're just going to go watch it on TV somewhere. If we were here, like maybe 10 minutes earlier, we would have made it. This is expected to be Donald Trump's last visit to the Pittsburgh area before the election on Tuesday. But many of those who came here tonight were from other states as well, looking for a chance to hear the candidate. Lynn Hayes Freeland, KDKA TV News. And like many other Donald Trump rallies, the crowd was wowed by what the Republican nominee had to say. Our political editor, John Delano, was there. He is still live tonight in Moon Township. John, good evening. Yes, indeed, Paul. And in fact, you know, the crowds are still leaving. Cars are exiting from the parking lots right behind me. And as you pointed out, Donald Trump was, in fact, two and a half hours late to Pittsburgh here. But that did not dampen the fervor in any way, shape or form of his ardent supporters, thousands of whom showed up and waited and waited and waited until his plane landed. And then the hangar doors opened to the Donald Trump plane and of course the candidate himself an enthusiastic crowd of perhaps eight to ten thousand jammed inside the atlantic aviation hangar to hear donald trump pledge to clean up washington when we win on november 8th we are going to drain the swamp and no surprise, he went after Hillary Clinton, even after the FBI director said the latest emails showed no sign of criminality. Right now, she's being protected by a rigged system. You can't review 650,000 emails in eight days. You can't do it, folks. Hillary Clinton is guilty. She knows it. The FBI knows it. The people the people know it and now it's up to the american people to deliver justice at the ballot focusing on western pennsylvania trump said he would bring back steel jobs coal jobs and shale jobs we will lift the restrictions on american energy including shale oil natural gas and clean beautiful coal trump needs pennsylvania to win the white house which he reminded voters God bless you. Get out and vote. We have to win Pennsylvania. Thank you. We love you. God bless you. It was a short speech for Donald Trump, perhaps 25 minutes uh, long, if that, because he really had another stop. Believe it or not, he's speaking right now in the state of Virginia, his fifth state of this whirlwind trip on the Sunday before a Tuesday election. Pennsylvania really is a must-win state for Donald Trump and for Hillary Clinton, which explains why Mike Pence was here in Pittsburgh on Thursday, Hillary Clinton on Friday, Joe Biden on Saturday, Donald Trump today, and of course, tomorrow, Hillary Clinton is coming back again. Really demonstrates how important we are to both candidates in this election. Live in Moon Township, I'm John Delano, KDKA TV News. John, we thank you. Now, developing tonight, an about face from the FBI director, James Comey, told Congress today that Hillary Clinton won't be charged in connection with newly discovered emails. Those emails found on Anthony Weiner's computer. He's the estranged husband of top Clinton aide Huma Abedin. Glad to see that as we were, uh, that he has found, as we were confident that he would, would that uh, he has confirmed the conclusions that he really uh, reached in July, and we're glad that this matter is resolved. And in a statement tonight, the Republican Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, says regardless of Comey's decision, Clinton still put the country's secrets at risk and compromised national security. Clinton plans to make one final stop in our area before Election Day. She'll hold a rally in front of the Cathedral of Learning in Oakland tomorrow. 
Gates open at 9.30. She speaks at noon. A real clear politics average of all polls shows the race has tightened in Pennsylvania. Clinton leading Trump, uh, Trump now rather by less than three points. Pennsylvania is considered a must-win state with 20 electoral votes, but President Obama told voters in Florida today that they have the power to decide the race. He said if Clinton wins Florida, Donald Trump has no chance at the presidency. Obama's on the campaign trail for Clinton, reaching out to minority voters. Polls open at 7 a.m. Election Day. If you're not sure where to go to cast your vote, we can help. Head to uh, our links and numbers section on KDKA.com. At least waited until he had a subpoena and the FBI had scoured those emails first. Because if they can get this done in nine days, they could have probably gotten all of it done before announcing anything in that amount of time. That, that, that's exactly the right point. First of all, the FBI is not supposed to comment on, on ongoing investigations, period. Um, second of all, even in the rare event that they might, they're certainly not supposed to do it so close to, the camp, to, to an election. And then when you look at what he did today, you say, why did he come out and send this letter last week? If, it, if they could look through these emails so quickly and find out that they were duplicates, that there was really nothing new here, why did he rush this letter up to Congress so close to an election? They could have waited until after the election, or they could have looked through these emails first, found that there was nothing, and either said that or handled it the way they do other investigations and just been completely quiet about it. That would have been the far wiser course of action. Uh, Matthew, just stand by a second. I just want to tell our viewers that you're looking at uh, Donald Trump arriving in Marion Township, Pennsylvania. It's a big rally uh, there this evening. Uh, Marion Township again, uh, Pennsylvania. I'm sorry, say again? Moon Township, sorry. I thought it said Marion on the, on the uh, locator up there. Moon Township, Pennsylvania. So anyway, I have to ask you this, Matthew. No matter who wins on Tuesday, should Director Comey resign, you think? You know, I think this current situation at, at DOJ is untenable. Um, you cannot have an FBI director that is unaccountable to the attorney general, is unaccountable to anyone, and that do who doesn't follow the rules. So I think one of three things either has, has to happen. Uh, either one, he realizes that he's made some serious mistakes, has a moment of introspection, and says, you know what, I messed up, I'm going to learn from it, I'm going to be more accountable in the future. Right. The other thing that can happen is a new attorney general comes in and reigns him in, and the third thing that could happen is he leaves in some form or fashion. All right, Matthew Miller, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And again, you're looking at uh, Donald Trump arri arriving in Moon Township, Pennsylvania, giving a big rally. This is the final moment of the campaign. Uh, we're going to show both candidates out on the campaign trail uh, tonight, tomorrow, all up until Election Day. So make sure you stay with CNN for all day coverage of Election Day. Every race across this country, it all starts on Tuesday. And when we come right back in this broadcast, a man who saw this whole thing coming and we said that James Comey had no choice but to speak out before Election Day. going to win back the White House. What people, what great people. When we win, we are bringing steel back. We're going to bring steel back to Pennsylvania like it used to be. We're putting our steel workers and our miners back to work. We are. We will be bringing back our once great steel companies. We're going to be bringing back new steel companies and plenty of other companies. We are not going to allow our jobs to be taken from our states anymore. Will your business be ready when growth presents itself? American Express Open Cards can help you take on a new job. Or fill a big order. Or expand your office and take the CNN app now. And we're back now live. Of course, the candidates in these battleground states tonight, Donald Trump in Pennsylvania, still pushing the uh, false email narrative, even though Hillary Clinton was cleared again by the FBI. Let's listen in. The American people to deliver justice at the ballot. Look, we are going to deliver justice the way justice used to be in this country. At the ballot box on November 8th, we are going to do something so special. It will be so special. It will be an amazing day. It'll be called Brexit plus, plus, plus. You know what I mean? And you know, the polls are coming in and these very, very dishonest people back there, the media, 
They're not happy. They're not happy. They are not happy, folks. We're leading in Ohio. We're leading in Iowa. We're leading in New Hampshire. We're leading in North Carolina. Again, Donald Trump in Pennsylvania will discuss his message and his narrative with our panel in just a little bit. But with less than two days to go until Election Day, the FBI Director James Comey tells Congress the investigation of Hillary Clinton's emails. ...on the stage and speak to Trump supporters. Uh, but we're trying to get the lay of the land to find out whether we actually do expect him to do it. Now, as you know, Mr. Trump is not shy about going in front of the cameras. Um, and he certainly was one of the you know, most successful reality TV shows in modern American history. So perhaps he will seize the moment to come out and do things his own way, uh, which has been his, his way, right? Just to, he doesn't care how people did it before. Uh, why else would he have gone over there from T Trump Tower understanding the situation here? And Trump Tower is not that far away from uh, the Hilton. So we are gonna stick around. Let's go, uh, Dana, your thoughts about what he may be doing here. Well, he I was just out. thinking that um, over, um, the last 18 months, every time I give what I think is really sound advice, <laughs> it's like, yeah, you are so 2008 and no longer needed. Um, yeah, so maybe then it's just uh, different and refreshing. Maybe he comes out and he says, imagine for a second if the shoe were on the other foot and I was the one that was not conceding at this point what the media would be doing and then just go on down that road like he's been. I mean, that is an option to him. Maybe he'll do something like that tonight. Plus, I think also he has genuine affection and appreciation for the people who are gathered there. Yeah. They believed in him from the beginning. They want to celebrate tonight. I remember what it was like at the Ronald Reagan building in 2004, we, two o'clock in the morning, we thought we were gonna have our moment. And then all of a sudden we're like, we gotta go home and we gotta come back here at 10 o'clock in the morning. He, he doesn't he, wanna have to disappoint he people. He could go out. I mean, this could be kind of a middle position where sure. he does go out and say it's been an exciting night and I want to thank all of you. And but obviously we have to wait for the final yes. count tomorrow. He'll probably do something in that middle well, like that. Let's see whether Carl Cameron has got any information. We mm -hmm. are apparently able to communicate with him now. Carl, do you know anything? Hi, Megan. Yes, we know that he is now in the Hilton Hotel here. We know that he does want to come out on, and talk. We don't know exactly what he's going to say, but obviously he's got lots of good things to say. Mr. Trump has called his candidacy and his campaign a movement for the better part of the last year and a half. It's been met with a tremendous amount of skepticism and cynicism, even from Republicans in his own party. Today, a big part of that was patched up when Paul Ryan called Mr. Trump and Mike Pence, the running mate and governor of Indiana, and congratulated him for, at that time, what appeared to be a likely win. Now it's a virtual certainty. The question is when the networks all get their numbers synced. Others have called other races that Fox has not, and everybody is under the 270 threshold. The Trump campaign recognizes that the Podesta message that they're not gonna concede tonight and they'll have more to say tomorrow is a bit of a taunt. It was the Clinton campaign that was suggesting that it would be, Ronald, it would be Donald Trump who would be refusing to concede, refusing to accept the legitimacy of the election mobilizing the, the cadre of lawyers and the airlift of attorneys to various different rural parts of half a dozen swing states to litigate the possible results. Now the question is whether or not that's what the Clinton campaign is doing. So I think we can expect Mr. Trump to make an overture to the defeated, to say that he's prepared to be the president of the United States for all folks, that Democrats, even those who adamantly opposed his candidacy, notwithstanding all of the name calling that came from the left against him, that he will govern as an outsider, that he will approach things differently, he will not proceed along the normal candidate's path, that he'll listen to what the American people want, and he'll act accordingly. It is a potential moment for him tonight to offer an olive branch, to reach out to Democrats who are tonight despondent. There is very little way one can overemphasize how shocked 
half of the electorate is. This is going to come down into a popular vote possible win for Clinton and an electoral college win for Donald Trump. That's the kind of thing that can really aggravate the defeated opposition. So it's time for him to start being really presidential because he's on the precipice of pulling off the victory. And what a victory it will be. Carl, good to see you. And so he is ignoring Dana's advice and coming out to speak to the crowd. Not not afraid of an anticlimactic moment at all, just priming the, the pump and getting yeah. the people ready for the big event tomorrow, which you know now feels inevitable. And the question is whether, even if Trump in a speech, Monica, can reach out to the other side, to the defeated, which we've seen him do. He, you know, he, he's not bad at delivering these speeches that we presume others help him with, right, who try to keep him on message. What's going to happen over the next six weeks as we gear up for the inauguration? And he has a very skeptical media, public, uh, her supporters, who are not prepared to give him the benefit of the doubt and who are going to continue to launch, you know, theoretical grenades at him. Well, I think it's going to be very interesting to watch. Um, Donald Trump is going to stay true to himself. But I also think, and, and we were talking about this earlier, that the job changes you and the magnitude of the responsibility of the job changes you. Let's start with tonight. I think Donald Trump's approach tonight as it's been throughout this campaign, is never to let Mrs. Clinton dictate what he's going to do. So that's why you're going to see him emerge tonight. I also think that he's going to express gratitude. I think he is going to deliver an inclusive message of change. I think he's going to talk about how this was a very hard fought race and that there were a lot of tough things said on both sides. But now is the time to bring the country together and that he looks forward to being that person in the presidency, in the Oval Office, to do that. Carl Rove. Well, he's going to do it his way. I don't know if he'll come out singing uh, Frank Sinatra's <laughs> tune or not, but he's going to do it his way. Um, but again, I, I, I think Dana gave him sage advice. I, it, maybe it's the half measure, come out and say, compliment everybody, thank everybody, express, exude optimism, and then uh, tomorrow have a message that's oriented towards unifying the country and setting the the tone for, for what's going on. I don't see out. how you can claim victory when you haven't won the victory. Mm -hmm. There's not a single news organization. Now, the, the New York Times has them at 265 electoral votes. We have them at 254 other news organizations. But he, the consensus is that he has not yet won the presidency. So I think it would be foolish for him to claim victory. You can do a lot of things short of claiming victory, but you can't say I'm the, ne I'm the president. By the way, after your question at the debate, you heard Jennifer Griffin reference the plane flight where she asked Secretary Clinton, would you accept right. a defeat? Mm -hmm. uh, we pulled that sound by, here it is. Will you accept the results of the election? <laughs> you know, it was horrifying what he said on the debate today. We are a country based on the laws, um, and we've had hot, contested elections going back to the very beginning, um, but one of our hallmarks has always been that we accept the outcomes of our election, we do the best we can to have free and fair elections, which we do, uh, and somebody wins and somebody loses. So she answered the question, somebody wins, somebody loses. They're waiting to see an official win is basically what right. the campaign is saying. Mm -hmm. No, and, and she said that we accept the result of the election. So and she hasn't not accepted the result of the election. She said right. we're going to wait till tomorrow. But the odds, I mean, realistically. No, I understand, yeah. but it isn't. No, 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 I'm not talking about whether she should concede, but I'm right. talking about just reality, because what people want right, right. now at 2.30 in the morning is results. They well, want to know who won. What people want. And the, and the, the but seriously, put it in perspective, Star. Well, see, yes, they back <laughs> me up. They never want it. The, the chances right now, truly, right. the chances of Hillary Clinton managing to pull off a victory here are, are what, 2%? Oh, psh, who knows? I wouldn't even I wouldn't even try. You're down to such a tight little crack that you'd have to run this thing through. It'd be impossible to say. But can I put but it another way? No, 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 no. But it's not that impossible because you could you could do it. It's vir it's virtually impossible for her to win at this point. Is that wrong? No, uh, no, it's not virtually impossible for her to win. But the odds, the preponderance overwhelmingly against that. But if you're Hillary Clinton, 
you were going to leave the door open. I mean, you'd leave the door open, too. Uh, but we're, well, I'm done talking about that. With right. whether she, 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 I get it. She wants oh, to okay. wait for the actual results. Got it. Check. Roger. Right. But the question is whether she actually still has a chance. Yeah, and she still realistically, has a chance. realistically, the answer is what? Yeah, she still has a chance. What if it was 2%? What if it was 5%? I feel what like if this was... is dumb and dumber. So you mean there's a chance? <laughs> the other, and the other it's thing good is, pop though, culture, Chris what's the hurry? <laughs> it's 2.30 in the morning, right? People at, at, at 2.30 in the morning would like calls. They'd also like pizza. They'd also like bed. People want a lot of things at 2.30 yeah. in the morning. Uh, for her and for him and for the country, there's no hurry. There's time. There's time to take your time and do well, it. Well, right. obviously, he's not buying this at 